Hello and welcome, this is Roofmonger, and this is my guide for Samurai Showdown to help you find a main character. So what I'm going to be doing is going through every single character in the game here, I'm going to have a brief overview of what they're about, what their kind of playstyle is, and I'll have every character sorted by beginner level characters, intermediate level characters, and advanced level characters. So there'll be plenty of timestamps in the video description, so if you want to use those to skip around and find the characters you like, hey, by all means, go for it. If you're looking for a how-to play... Samurai Showdown, you know you don't know much about the series, please check the end of the video as there will be a link to a guide there to help you just teach you the basics of the game. But now let's start with what I consider to be the beginner level characters, the characters that are the easiest suited for you to learn the game. So starting off with our beginner characters, I think the best example of a beginner character is Haomaru. He is the flagship character for the game and he's kind of just good at everything. He's not great at any one thing. Uh, the first thing you probably notice about him is this thing right here is Stan Heavy and how it chunks you for a vicious amount of life every time it hits. Um, one little note here before we go too, too crazy about that. Um, it does have quite a bit of clash, uh, meaning if the enemy blocks it, you're going to be bounced back and it's not necessarily the safest thing on block. Um, so just before you're aware, just so you, you know, don't spam it too, too much because you'll get killed. But uh, going over his basic moveset, he does have a fireball. And some big old hurricane, as you can see there. He does have, effectively, what you would call a dragon punch. And his uppercut here, it is invincible, just like, say, Ryu and Street Fighter. That's why, that's kind of the comparison here. Um, and between that, uh, he has a serviceable range for a lot of his normals. Big range for some of the big stuff here, as you can see here. He also has a couple little tricks up his sleeve. So as you can see here, he has a projectile reflect. That is not standard for, you know, kind of like your so-called hero character in many fighting games, but he does have it and it is handy to have. He can also flip over many projectiles here with a slam dunk move, or low profile, low moves to begin with anyways. That is a true overhead, it does have to be block standing. And also one thing to have here, uh, the notice, is uh, the weapon flip super, which is kind of like your standard super in this game here. His weapon flip super is actually quite a bit more ranged than most characters. As you see here, it does a lot of damage, and the range is just really far. A lot of characters struggle to even be able to hit it off a regular uh, guard break, and him, he can just do it in response to a whiff button. So all in all, he's just really good at everything. He kind of has everything he needs. Just once again, he doesn't really excel at any one facet of the game, but if you're just learning the game, hey, you definitely can't go wrong with him. So moving on with the beginner characters is Charlotte. So if you've heard the term footsies before in fighting games, I think Charlotte is kind of an immaculate example of that as she is the queen of pokes. Stan Light has more range than most people Stan Light. Stan Medium has a lot of range for Stan Medium in this game. Uh, Crouch Medium also has a lot of range and she has a bunch of specials that are designed with pokes in mind that have a bunch of various ranges that can go to basically full screen. Like just a little bit closer than that, there we go. So. Her range is immaculate. That is kind of the big thing about her, is if you're just staying linear with her, like on the ground, uh, she's probably gonna be out poking you nine times out of 10. That's where her bread is buttered. That is her biggest strength. And to help uh, work with this also, she does have her projectile. It's a uh, kind of an oddball projectile. Uh, depending on your strength, it'll disappear earlier on. So this is the heavy version. That's the one that goes full screen. You are also allowed to hold it. So if someone sees you dial it up and they try to jump early, you can hold this projectile and then let it rock and then they'll jump right into it. So yeah, a lot of her game plan is just with that, try to get you frustrated to jump and all that. And she does have, of course, some uppercuts here to prevent people from jumping. And just, yeah, her whole thing is ground control. Now to complement her wide variety of pokes here, ground control, projectiles, you know, stopping you uh, from jumping in on her with an uppercut. She also has one of the best jumps in the game here, the jump is actually quite low to the ground. Many jumps in this kind of game are a little more floaty than you might be used to in many funny games, but hers, she doesn't really get in the air much and she goes to the ground very quick and combine that with her jumping heavy attack, it makes her a very aggressive jumping character. Also, this move is a fantastic cross up and you can also get a full combo from it. As you can see there. Combos in this game are not big like some other games, just so you know, but yeah. Um, so she can just very easily win the poke war, although she might struggle a little bit against characters that can outrange her. But in that case, then she can just kind of go crazy on the offense and start jumping a lot. And it's very difficult to anti-air her, because once again, she's just barely in the air at all. So the time you would normally have to react to a jump is a lot lower. But yeah, as far as pokes, fireballs, uppercuts, jumps, all that, she's a really complete package and a very easy game plan to work with. 
Moving on to Jubei. Jubei is the guy who wants to take it nice and slow. And he's got all the tools he needs for that. So first up here, his reach on his normals is slightly above average. Especially stuff like stand medium. Stand medium is actually really fantastic. As you can see, the range is really, really good. Uh, he also has some other uh, really good normals and stuff like his runs. His running H uh, is completely safe on block as far as I can tell. Unlike many uh, H style moves. Uh, like his stand H... Nice big chunk to say the least, but uh, if it gets blocked, he might be able to get poked back as a punish. But his running H, it's just, it's good to go. It's just fantastic. So he just has really strong moves as far as his normals are concerned. And one thing about his normals here is this is a very rare process in this game. So many moves can be special canceled, yes, but they all tend to be of the close variety. Like if you're a little further back, that's the far version of the move. This is the close version of the move. He can special cancel the fire version of his move, which is very rare. And so he can special cancel into his fireballs. And he has a very proficient fireball game. Now, the one thing to note here is, yes, his fireball at this distance does not combo. It will combo closer up, though, just so you know. Uh, but it's meant to... It's basically a harassment kind of thing here. And when people get a little too belligerent here, when they're trying to get out of the range of normals here, because, uh, once again, he has really good normals, and plus the fireball game is one of the better fireball games in the game, uh, you know, you might be prone to jump, and he really, really, really has an answer for that. So Jubei has counters. He has low, medium, and high, and these counters are the real deal. Like, that's not nothing for damage, as you can see right there. Um, so he doesn't have a traditional uppercut. Like, his uppercut's actually a charge forward move, and the uppercut only comes up if the charge hits. But the moves here, as you can see, they do a fair chunk of damage. <laughs> that's the medium one. Um, so if he calls you out, that could potentially be the round. So on top of just, you know, playing nice and slow, he's going to just throw his fireballs, wait, and just poke and poke and poke. The second you get really rash and try something, if he calls you out, man, that's the game. So he just wants to sit and wait and just kind of react. And when the enemy doesn't want to react, then you poke, you poke, you throw fireballs. You can poke and throw a fireball. And just once again, run stand H, I think is a really fantastic move for him. He's just really good, so... If you just want to play just a nice, solid, plain, vanilla game plan, you know, no fanciness, no, you know, hot, crazy mix-ups, all that kind of stuff, just a simple, effective game plan, Jubei is your guy. Also, as a real quick note, I do think his universal overhead is actually one of the best ones. Uh, the range is uh, very far, it knocks down, uh, he hops while doing it, and he doesn't move forward, so it's zero commitment. So I do think he has one of the best universal overheads as well. So Darley Dagger, Darley is one of the new characters in this game, and with this, what is her game plan? Well, she's pretty straightforward in that she basically wants to attack, 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 attack. Um, she is another character with a pretty good jump angle and combined with her jumping H, which is just a totally complete hitbox, let's put it that way. Uh, her jump H is a very belligerent move and she's going to be using it a lot. Uh, she's a mildly difficult to anti-air because once again her jump is not as floaty as some characters and the arc on jump H means you can basically hit people with it right away. Also her jumping medium is a cross up meaning you do have to block this move the other way. So with that and her jump H she just has a very strong and belligerent jump game. Also the jumping medium if you hit it deep enough you can combo after it as well. As you can see right there. So yeah, her jumping offense is fantastic. But is she more than jumps? Well, obviously, absolutely. She has more than just jumps going on. Uh, one of the big things is the hammer. So this is one of her specials. And she can move forward while doing it, but not move backwards. Although she is able to dash cancel out of it. And the hammer, if you just let go and hit it, it is a projectile reflect. So if you smack someone with it, you know, it's all well and good, right? But if you hit a fireball with it, you'll send the fireball going back towards the enemy. And also, you can charge this move. And the more you charge it, the properties change. So that's an example here. Let's say we do the heavy version. We're just going to let it rock the whole way through. It becomes a full screen unblockable. And by unblockable, I mean, yo, unblockable. And it does a couple points of damage. And the enemy's dizzy. So he can guarantee a hit afterwards. So that's technically one combo right there. So watch out if she's charging the hammer. You definitely want to go after her. And once again, her only options are move forward, let go of the hammer, or the dash backwards to cancel it. So while she's charging it up, she's extra dangerous. She also does have a true command grab and actually looks really cool. She summons all sorts of weapons here from uh, drills. Uh, she has like a scythe, which also is basically her only effective poke at a range. Uh, despite having such a giant weapon, you'd think her range is a little bit better than it is, but it kind of really isn't. But uh, using this special here, that's basically her main poke as it can hit from very far away, as you can tell. And the damage is respectable for a poke in that regard. 
Also, one thing that's kind of unique about her, uh, a lot of characters who have running kicks, which, well, everyone has running kick, most of them are lows. Uh, for her, her running kick is actually an overhead, and her running heavy is a low, so she kind of has a running high-low mix-up just off the bat. If she's running at you, you kind of merely have to guess overhead or low, and the options are not necessarily the safest if they get blocked, but still, it is just a 50-50 off of basic run. So yeah, in the end, she's just going to be bulldogging you with runs, with mostly a lot of jumps, because once again, it's kind of difficult to anti-air her. Uh, some characters, maybe not as difficult for a lot of the cast, just considering her jump angle is very short and jump H is very uh, belligerently good for a hitbox. She just wants to go, go, go. She's definitely not going to be a character that's just going to sit back full screen unless you're trying to charge your hammer and go for the unblockable. Um, she's just really an aggressive character. So moving on to the first of the, what I consider to be intermediate characters is Earthquake. And first thing you're probably noticing is, yeah, this guy's really big. Uh, and his movement is, well, it's his movement, right? Uh, even when he runs, got a nice fat guy run. And he also has some nice fat guy attacks as well, which is pretty cool. Uh, but the one thing you probably don't get from this character just by looking at him is he's one of the most shockingly mobile characters in the game. Um, he has stuff like the wall jumps. Uh, this is normally reserved for quick characters in most fighting games. Yeah, he's got that stuff. Uh, he's got teleports that can very easily punish, you know, whiff fireballs or any big normal whiffs uh, from full screen. Um, he can very easily just teleport and wheel in. He's crazy mobile for a big guy. And uh, going with that, his greatest strength besides just that really odd mobility is the normals. Uh, his normals reach from very far away. Uh, he's basically, if you want to compare it to Street Fighter, he's sort of the game's Dalsum. Uh, his mediums are also very good and don't incur the normal clash on block like many mediums do. So there's no clash back here on block. It just pushes people back. So his mediums are actually quite a bit safer than most characters. And uh, the one thing here, if we're going to talk about any normal, because he has a lot of good normals for range, is jump heavy. So his jump heavy is probably the single best jumping move in the game. As he can hit you without committing to nothing. Like, if you're the kind of character who wants to uppercut uh, a jump, he can hit you from a range where the uppercut will miss. And on top of that, like, his attack begins very early on in the jump. So it's actually even difficult to react to it in time. So his jump heavy is potentially the best jumping attack in the game, and that's really good. It's a really big feather in his hat. He also has a command grab, and his command grab is, uh, well, not the most damaging move in the game as you see here. Uh, actually, if you do a backwards uh, guard break into a stand heavy, it actually does more damage than his command grab. But the one thing the command grab has is it has more range than the guard break. And also starts up a few frames quicker if I'm not incorrect about that one. And it just looks cool too, right? Um, but yeah, it's a very handy thing to have. Also, he's got a lot of weird unorthodox moves. Like uh, he's got this fire breath. And the one thing about the fire breath is it deals a lot of chip damage in this game here. So as you can see here, the penalty for blocking this is like, you know, taking a medium or a light just normally, right? If you block that, you don't feel too far ahead. And also the pushback is quite uh, severe. So there's not really any punishing it either. So yeah, um, if the move hits, that's fantastic. But if they block it, they don't feel like too much of a winner either because they just took a lot of chip. So if he has giant normals in the air, potentially the best jumping normal in the game, all this weird mobility, teleports, you know, far range normals. Well, what's the weakness, right? Well, one, he's big, you know, and uh, it's a lot easier to hit him than other things. Also, he's got really no way to anti-air people other than just jump and meet them in the air. And I guess jump medium and jump light aren't the worst for that. But uh, he does struggle against people who are very jumpy as he can't really do anything other than just jump and meet you in the air and smack you out of the air. So if you're going to play Earthquake, if you like big characters, well, hey, this is a very well done big character. And uh, if you like just always doing something, if you just want to wait and just want to be flitty and just, you know, do stuff, well, at the very least, you can always jump heavy and just go from there, right? So Earthquake, if you got a little bit of just, you know, jitteriness to you and you just want to always keep doing stuff, Earthquake, despite being a big character and generally big characters do less stuff in fighting games, Earthquake's definitely your guy in this game. Going on to Kyoshiro. Kyoshiro is kind of a basic traditional zoner. So he has his little water fireball here, goes on the ground. And as far as fireball goes, this is probably one of the better ones in the game here. As you can see here, the range is really good. Uh, his hitbox on the ground is a little bit better than some of the other ground-based ones. 
And of course, with being a traditional zoner, as soon as you jump, then he gets you with the uppercut and we just go from there, right? Also, his range is uh, respectable. I wouldn't say it's best in class, but he definitely has respectable range on a lot of his normals. Also, his running B is an overhead. So you do have to block that one standing. So then can mix with here with his running light, which is a low. He does also have a running 50-50. So his basic game plan is, you know, just toss a lot of fireballs, frustrate him, uppercut him when they jump. And when you want to go on the offense, he does have kind of a running 50-50, which is really good. And of course, basic pokes. Also, the biggest and most important thing, of course, is he has a frog. And that frog is super cool. Uh, <laughs> Now, this is not a command grab, sadly, it is a hit throw, so they are allowed to block it, but if the frog hits you with the tongue, you're gone, and you're gonna take a nice little chunk of damage. And, man, it is just really, really cool. I can't, I can't say much more than that. This frog is super sick. Look at that guy. Uh, but yeah, so if you're looking for a nice traditional style zoner, Koshiro's the guy. Now to Yoshitora. So Yoshitora is, you know, kind of as his appearance would show you. He's a Swiss Army knife. He's actually got a lot of stuff, and he better because he's holding some freaking swords, right? Uh, so he's got a lot of special moves here. Uh, as you see here, he's got quite a few options, and it all works together. There is a synergy to this because he actually has a game plan he's working towards. So he has seven swords, and he has seven special moves. And the seventh special move can only be done after you've already hit all six of his regular special moves. So he has running slides. He has uppercuts. He has this aerial special, which actually is very nice angled on jump. And we'll talk more about jump later because his jump is fantastic. Um, he does have this nice little rush move. It's very good for combo fodder. He does have this fake out here. And if you choose to do the not fake out version, it's an overhead. And he also has a true command grab. It does switch sides, but hey, command grabs are command grabs. You can't block them, right? And when that's all said and done, you've done all these guys here. You have now unlocked the use of the final move here. And this move is the real deal. So, just have a look at the enemy's health bar is all I can really say. That was two or three points of damage, right? So, that move is unlocked after you've already hit all six of your other specials. And many of those specials you can combo into or they're just good tools in the neutral. And just, you know, this, that, and the other. But that's the end game plan. So, you hit all those specials, you'll get that. And that's basically... The guaranteed win at that point if you can actually get it off so he has a game plan to work towards and if you like that kind of thing of goal oriented stuff he's your guy also his jump heavy is really stupid like geez louise he's the only real contender i have in my brain anyways besides earthquake for best jumping attack because it is belligerent as you can see here you just do it early don't even think about it just do it early because he hits so many times and does so much damage <laughs> And uh, as long as you hit it nice and uh, at a good angle, then you can combo afterward and just go from there. So, yeah, it's really good. Tam Tam is a very nice grab bag of skills here. He has some of the best normals in the game here. Uh, like Stand Light hits from that far away. As you can tell, that's really good. Stand Medium also hits from that far away. And his Crouch Heavy also fantastic range. So when you're just looking for big normals, hey, Tam Tam's absolutely one of the better characters in the game for that. And also he has really one of the better projectile games as well. So he has a high projectile and a low projectile. And he can throw up to three of each. As you can see there. And he can also mix and match in any way he so chooses. So when it comes to just pure zoning, that's really, really good. Speaking of which, that's not even his only fireball option. He also has the pillar here. And depending on what button you hit, it'll go for a little further and further and further up until a uh, full screen version here. And the damage is also pretty respectable for a fireball. So between that and just his varying screen control and just the size of his normals, he can definitely control a lot of the screen from far away in a nice, safe way. He does also have a command grab, although it is quite a bit slower than most other people command grabs. Uh, so it's just basically there as a nice to have. Um, but you're definitely not going to be using it like in a way that some of the other people command grabs have it. Also, he has a bit of a 50-50 game, so we want to stuff like, you know, Crouch Heavy and all that's really good for the range. And he has a variety of lows. Uh, if you jump and do your heavy, and if you do it right away, the hitbox hits so low to the ground that it is an instant overhead. So if they have to block it, if they're crouching, they'll just get smacked by it, right? So you can just jump backwards and do it. If you're looking to close out a round, as you can see the damage is very respectable, right? So if you're looking to close out a round, that's going to be a fantastic way to do it because the range on that's just really good. So when you're up in someone's face here, uh, you know, you can go for like, you know, quick little sweep or whatever, you know, running uh, kick, which is 
for the most part low for most characters or threaten with whatever low you might so choose but you always have the threat of jump back heavy and just chunking them for a nice amount of damage overhead so if you're just looking for someone who's kind of just a little bit good at everything here especially when it comes to aspects of screen control what with uh, his projectile options and just massive range of his normals tam tam is the guy for you Going on to Genjiro, he is a true blue, aggressive, you know, pressure slash mix-up character here. So, not to say he's shortchanged in his normals, although his normals aren't as long as some of the other characters in the game. Uh, but just move on, like, one basic special here. So he kind of has this Rekka series here, where those nice playing cards show up. And a lot of the moves are card-based, by the way. Um, but just stuff like, that was the light version here. So, say we go on to move to the medium. The medium is a true cross-up. Heavy's cross-up. And you can do stuff like cross-up, cross-up. Like double layer cross up, you have to block cross up, and they have to block cross up again, like that kind of stuff. So he's a mix up monster, and that's just one layer of it. So he doesn't have a fireball here, and you see here, that's the light, that's not too far, that's the medium, and that's the heavy. And you might be asking, well, what's the point, right? Um, fireballs aren't very good if they don't go very far. Well, here's the thing: if you hold the button when it connects, and the move is blocked, so right there, that's the hit. So let's set it to block here. When it connects and the move is blocked. You see that kind of bounces up nice and clean here and it goes over and it becomes a secondary projectile and depending on which one you do here the bounces are a little bit different so the light bounce is nice and slow angle and comes uh, landing on their head that's this guy here the medium does the same deal but does quite a bit quicker and the heavy kind of bounces back far and we go from there so you can apply a lot of pressure so Say at the very least, like this is the most basic layer right here, right? You do this, and it's gonna bounce on their head, and you go, okay, well now you know you can't do too much, because even if they hit you, that won't go away. Even if they hit you, it's still gonna land on their head, right? So from here, okay, low, or you can go for like universal overhead, like a low high mix, right? But then also, one of his other special moves, he does have a true command grab as well. So you can run up and even before they have to deal with a high low mix and block and all that kind of stuff, you can just run up and chuck them. So that's another layer of his pressure and this move is fantastic for pressure. He does also have a dragon punch slash uppercut and it's useful in all the ways that's really useful, right? So if the person wants to go ham on you, well then you can just dissuade him by doing that. But yeah, between the stuff of just, you know, uh, he has mix ups from the Rekkas, you can play it straight too and hit from the same side if he wants as well, but it's just really his call on how he wants to play it, like double air mix-ups, or one mix-up stays same side of the other one. Uh, and just the pressure from the playing cards here. Man, oh man, he is just a monster as far as offense is concerned. Galford. So Galford is a two-four, because not only do you get Galford, you also get Poppy the dog. And this dog is not messing around, as this dog's the real deal here. Uh, he will beat your head in and do so gladly because he is also a ninja dog. So when you're looking at what does Galford have to offer you, one, he's very quick. He's got a lot of the usual ninja stuff here, wall dives, uh, he does have an air throw. Um, he's just a real grab bag of stuff. So first up here, he's got fireballs, right? And it's a pretty serviceable one. Uh, Poppy also has multiple options here. So we see Poppy Azuna drop here, and oh, by the way, he has his own Azuna drop too, so you can mix and match with that. It is a true command grab, just like Zangief. Uh, Poppy uh, has all sorts of things. Poppy can teleport as well. And of course, you as a ninja can also teleport. And that's like a left-right. You can choose if it hits left or right as a reactionary thing. He just has a lot of options. Like, there's no th range where Galford's not really a threat. I guess the worst thing you can say about him is his normals is like only serviceable but um he just has so many options to work with because uh once again real quick here as fireball the dog has a million options he can teleport he can be a projectile you can teleport and be a projectile uh he has a true command grab here uh he just got a lot of stuff to work with here also uh run running heavy here is indeed an overhead so you have a running uh high low mix so that's another thing He's just a really complete character and can give you a lot of basically what the game has to offer. So Nakoruru, Nakoruru uh, has the bird, if you haven't noticed. There's a big old bird flying here and he ain't for show. Easier to fight, right? 
Um, so she's a very quick character herself here. The range on her normals is, as you can see, compared to a lot of characters, very short. But her main game plan is to frustrate the enemy here and just kind of flit around. So she has stuff like, you know, just very quick rushing low. And she also can fly into the air with this style of move as well if you catch a jump. Uh, the bird is a projectile and can smack you. And she can also get on the bird, as you can see here. And actually, when she's on the bird, you might think, well, this is the time to hit her, right? You can jump at her. The one thing is she has a lot of options. She can attack from the bird as well. Although those normals are not as amazing. I'm not going to lie to you. Like... You're mostly going to be just like trolling people if you're doing stuff like that, right? Uh, but the thing is, if you're directly underneath her, she can kind of win down and hit you with the overhead heel kick, which is really good. And she also has a rush from this. So if you get too close to her, she can react and just whack you right there. And there's not too much you can do about it. So when she's on the bird, you kind of have to really respect it. I know it's very awkward looking and really weird looking if you're not familiar with this kind of stuff here. But you actually have to give her some amount of respect. Because if you try anything and just miss, she can go whack and get you right from the bird with the speed of light. Uh, so she plays a very odd game. It's definitely not a very standard game, but you're just gonna be flitting around a lot, you know, do your little quick person things. She also has wall jumps and stuff like that. Uh, use the bird to attack. Uh, and yeah, it's just a very non-standard game plan. So if you do like someone who's just weird compared to less, a lot of the rest of the cast, Knack is the person for you. So Hanzo is a ninja's ninja to say the least here. Um, he is basically what you think he is and that's all sorts of crazy gimmickry and all sorts of crazy mix-up. So first up here, let's just talk about this real quick. He does have a very competent fireball game. Uh, he has the traditional bouncing fireball and he also has his ninja stars here. So he can kind of harass you on multiple levels with that. He'll always bounce backwards after ninja stars so he's mostly safe for tossing him. And going forward from that, he has teleports for days. So I'm talking like... Hey, I want to be over there. So now I'm over there on top of your head, teleporting on top of you. I want to fake a teleport. I can fake a teleport, right? Uh, if I want to be, say, over here, I'm like, you know, just wasting your time and like coming from all sorts of weird angles, I can do that, you know. Say I want to hit you with an instant overhead. I can do that. Say you see this teleport and like, oh, I'm going to block overhead. I'll hit you with a low. Like he's got all sorts of teleports and he can be at all sorts of weird angles on the screen whenever he wants. Also, a weird staple of being a ninja in Samurai Showdown is command grabs, and he's got a command grab. And it's a very traditional Azuna drop here. Um, favorite of ninjas in fighting games from everywhere from, you know, Ryu, uh, Ryu Hayabusa to Vega and Street Fighter. Uh, the Azuna drop is a thing, and it creates a giant explosion. Actually, it's a very sick animation in this game. So, if you want someone here that just wants to be aggressive, do all sorts of crazy mix-ups, all sorts of crazy teleports, and... When they're finally flustered and just, you know, start playing pure defense and you say screw it, then you're just going to pile drive them. This is your guy. He's got a very wacky offense to say the least. Also, stuff like his run H is not an overhead like some people have. Like some people have a running overhead. He's got a running cross up. You have to block that the other way. So he's just a grab bag of weird left, right, high, low, all that kind of crazy stuff. If you're looking to mix people, this is your boy. So Wu Ruzhong is a very underrepresented archetype in fighting games as she is a trap zoner. So she can create this little puddle here. It's kind of like a Punjabi stick trap. And if the enemy walks into it or goes near it, it's going to explode and then hit him from there. And yes, just before you're asking, you can totally hit him afterwards. As you can see right there, right? So with this, that's the trap. So where's the zoning? Well, yeah, she's got low fireballs. Medium fireballs, high fireballs, all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, she can even reflect fireballs as well. So we have the enemy set to do a fireball. And we can send it right back in their face. And that fireball reflector here, this guy here, also doubles as a counter move. So it's pulling double duty here. So, yeah, she can be very difficult to deal with in a lot of ways, to say the least. Uh, she has counter moves, and this is a one-shot wonder counter move, reflect and counter all in one here. Uh, she has the trap, she has her fireballs, all that. So what's the weakness? Well, the weakness is her normals are definitely substandard here. Uh, they're kind of shorter range. They definitely don't do as much damage as a lot of people do. So you're definitely going to be trying to win through just judicious use of uh, spacing with the trap, uh, frustrating people with your fireballs, and then just the odd poke and all that. Uh, but if you're just playing the opponent's game here and trying to get dragged into a poke war, that kind of stuff, you're definitely not going to win, right? 
If you're going to play this character, you're going to have to take it nice and slow. You're always going to want to hide behind your traps. Or, you know, if you want to be really tricky, you know, try to push them into your traps, right? Because not only can you hit them after a trap, you know, just bonk them on the head. You can also do stuff like this. If you're on the ball enough, you can combo right into your special super and just get a lot of damage. And uh, also your weapon flip super as well if you have the bar for it. Uh, she can definitely get a lot of damage off a successful trap to say the least, as you can see right there, right? Um, so she's going to be playing it very slow and just looking for the big play. So once again, please, 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 you're meant to hide behind this. So make sure you do it. Don't get dragged into a fist fight with someone because you're not going to win it with this character. Yashimaru is one of the new characters of the series, and he's a very weird one because he can double jump. So some characters can wall jump in this game, but uh, he just straight up double jumps. And that's very weird, but it works out because a lot of his offense is aerial based. So before we get to that, I do want to say he's got serviceable normals, the pokes and all that kind of stuff. He's got pretty decent range on that, so that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, the big thing is the air stuff because he has multiple specials he can do in the air. So the first one is a quarter circle forward attack here, and that's a uh, big dive if it's the heavy version. That's the light version. That's the medium version. So one of the things you can do is just kind of flit around, not commit. And if you see the enemy, you know, with something, at that point you can just dive in and get the punish, right? And what complements that is his aerial projectile. So as you can see, he does that. He just tosses his big, I'm assuming, Naganata or whatever kind of weapon that is. I'm not sure, actually. Uh, but yeah, it's a good angle. And depending on the button you press, it does change the angle here, so the light is a much more shallow version. And if you do whiff it, he does move forward, or sorry, moves backwards quite a bit. So uh, it's another kind of low commitment option. So you can just kind of just stay in the air a lot and just kind of not commit to nothing. And eventually, you know, every now and then just check out your projectile and harass. And as soon as you see the big whiff, you can just go in and dive in. So that's a big part of his gameplay. So one of the things he just has to do, because he is so airborne, is he doesn't have to really commit to too much. You can just sit and wait, sit and wait, because not many characters can deal with someone who's in the air constantly, right? Um, so that's definitely one of the strengths of his game plan. Also, he is one of the characters, his running heavy is an overhead, so that leads to the running high-low mix, so that's also very handy. Also, if you're inclined to like these kind of characters, he's definitely the Sephiroth, you know, edgelord guy. When he goes into the Rage Burst here, his eyes turn yellow, and he has that Yori pose, and like all that kind of stuff. If you like that kind of character, that's the guy. So Ukyo, Ukyo has definitely always been a fan favorite character, and in this game, I think he's as strong as he's ever been. Um, he always has his good suite of normals here, like you know, stand medium, run H, all that kind of stuff. It's all there, and it's all still quite good. Uh, he still has his awful jump, so don't be thinking you're gonna be jumping too much with him. Uh, he does have a normal you can special cancel from far away. So that leads to some pretty decent stuff here, and he uses that quite a bit, actually. Uh, but, so, first and foremost, let's just talk about the 50-50. So, you know, he's got the lows, all that kind of stuff here, and that's great. So, what's the overhead? Well, the overhead is this guy. So, that is basically as instant as an instant overhead gets. Uh, I believe the English name is uh, Concealed Saber Swallow Swipe. I always just called this Flame Slash, right? Um, and you can Tiger Knee the move. So, the move is an aerial move. Like, you are meant to do this in the air, right? But the trick is, you can do the motion on the ground, and then hit a jump, and then it'll still come out. And so you can do fun stuff like this. See how low to the ground that is? That's pretty crazy, right? Um, so if you do it very, very quickly, you'll get the version here that's like just like that. You barely leave the ground. You're like scraping the top of your head off the ground. If you do it a little bit slower, you'll get the version where he jumps back. But yeah, that's an instant overhead, right? So you can threaten with the lows all you want. And then threaten that with that as the instant overhead. Of course, when they start, you know, getting really sassy, you can start guard breaking them. And, you know, go for some basic stuff like that. But, yeah, he can just 50-50 you all day long. And you just have to respect it because that overhead is completely unseeable. There's no possible way to react to it. And the low is basically unseeable as well. So, he's basically a character that has a very strong 50-50 game. While also having just very strong, like, neutral, like... His buttons are very good. His down medium is like one of the best anti-airs ever. Because I don't have to tell you just by looking at that move, right? You can tell it's a good anti-air. Also, you know, if you ever feel like tossing your apples, you can do that. And if you also want to kill your apples, well, you can kill your apples too. Because he hates those apples and wants to chop them in half. And as a character, she's weird. Uh, she does not really have a comparable analog to pretty much anyone else. She definitely plays by the beat of her own drum. 
Uh, so first up here, she's got teleports here, but they're not like attack teleports like uh, some of the ninja characters have. She can stay in place, go backwards or go forwards. Uh, she has a very odd command grab here. So that's that. It is a true command grab. You can't block that. And she'll like jump forward while doing it. So you don't got to be in their face. In fact, if you're in their face, it can make it miss. So you kind of have to like land on top of them. So that's very odd as well here. Uh, she has stuff like, you know, Death Blossom, which is cool, but it's kind of difficult to hit. She does have a Dragon Punch. Um, she's definitely a closer range character. She does have a Rekka's here, so she can do moves like that and follow it up. She does have a far cancelable normal, although her normal doesn't hit from very far. But still, you can do stuff like this. Um, she's just a little bit weird, though, because, like, it's hard to get a hang on what you want her game plan to be. Um, in my time with, uh, everyone in the roster, uh, I find her, honestly, the most difficult to understand what you really want to be going for. Because she has, like, some really weird strengths. Like, her special super, super special, um, is the only one that's, like, full screen. <laughs> like, it hits anywhere on screen. So, uh, this is a character you can literally miss a button from full screen and, yeah, you die for it, right? So, she probably has the best super special in the game. Because she can just get you whiffing stuff or just catching you missing a button or if, like, the start of, like, a projectile startup or whatever from full screen. And you're just done. Like, that's really good. No other character in the game can really offer that kind of move, right? So that's really strong, but for the most part, she definitely seems to want to just get in and just kind of attack, attack, attack. She doesn't really have much of a game plan other than that, as far as I can tell. The teleports are cool, but once again, there's no attacks attached to them, like some of the ninjas. So they're purely a movement style thing here. Her moves are a little bit short range, as you see here. They're very, like, meaty looking, very powerful looking, which is cool. But still, they are short range, right? So, you just kind of just want to get in and attack. Her damage is definitely better than most. Like, that's the basic jump in for her, right? That's definitely better than most people get. Um, but yeah, it just seems to be attack, 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 and hit people with, like, the really oddball weird stuff like that. So, that's the end of the video. So, I know it's hard in any new fighting game to find out what characters you want to play, right? Sometimes you just want to play people based on, you know, how cool you think they look. And, hey, that's perfectly valid, right? Uh, but sometimes you have a certain style in mind. And in that, I hope the video helped you figure out just how the generalist, uh, you know, just how the characters play in general, right? Um, there's other videos for Samurai Showdown on this channel to just, you know, help teach you how the game works in general. And if you want to check those out, you know, hey, feel free. I ain't going to stop you. Right? But anyways, that is it for me. So thank you very much for watching. I hope this video has found you well. Go out and play some Samurai Showdown.